Down on the farm, water pumps that were once the trademark of rural living are becoming harder to find. They've been replaced with turbine pumps that pull more water from greater depths to help meet the needs of California agriculture. Cities are also using efficient pumping systems to bring water to the surface. In fact, because of rapid population growth, cities have become more dependent on groundwater than ever before. But how much usable water can be pumped from the ground? And will there be enough to meet the demand? In this program, we will learn more about the water that is stored underground and how we can make the most of our groundwater to help meet our future water needs. Since the 1800s, Californians have built wells to tap the water that lies below the surface. In the early 1900s, the use of groundwater exploded with California's rapid expansion and the development of the turbine water pump. The new pump technology allowed more groundwater to be pumped faster. But many wells started going dry and had to be drilled deeper, evidence that the groundwater levels were falling. In the 60s and 70s, large amounts of surface water became available as a result of the construction of the Central Valley Project and the State Water Project. As surface water was used instead of groundwater, the rate at which groundwater levels were falling slowed down. In normal years, over 40% of California's total water supply is drawn from the ground. During dry times, it's as much as 60% because there is less surface water available. Californians depend on groundwater for more than half of their domestic water supply. As California's population increases, so will the demand for high quality groundwater. Agriculture is a major user of groundwater. When surface water is in short supply, farmers become even more dependent on groundwater to maintain production and protect permanent crops. But the agricultural use of water is not expected to increase much. Most land that can be irrigated is already in production or has been converted to urban development. So future increases in groundwater use will mainly come from cities. It is estimated that in 10 years there will be 6 million more Californians. And as cities grow, so will their dependence on groundwater. That's because places to build new surface water storage facilities are limited. They're costly and can have an adverse impact on the environment. But groundwater can continue to provide a dependable, affordable water supply. Groundwater lies beneath 40% of the state's surface in more than 450 groundwater basins. Rain, snowmelt, rivers and streams, irrigated and flooded land feed California's groundwater. Water slowly percolates down by gravity into pores and spaces saturating sedimentary materials such as sand, gravel, silt, and clay. In hard rock areas, groundwater fills the cracks and fissures. Making the best use of water stored beneath the surface is rapidly growing in importance. We don't have that dependable surface streams that will serve all the population. So groundwater is probably the main source of water that we can depend upon. It will always be available as long as we protect it and, and make good use of it. Unfortunately, there are limits to groundwater development. These limits are a result of overdrafting groundwater basins and concerns over water quality. Overdraft occurs over a long period when more water is pumped from the ground than is replaced. As water tables fall, some sediments beneath the surface may compact. The result is subsidence. Subsidence means the ground surface sinks, which can damage canals, highways, and other structures. Another limit to groundwater development is water quality. Water quality degrades if poor quality water flows into areas of high quality groundwater. When too much groundwater is removed from basins near the ocean, salt water can move inland and contaminate fresh groundwater. Salts and chemicals, both natural and synthetic, can also degrade groundwater quality if they accumulate and are drawn toward groundwater pumps. To help protect groundwater quality, state and federal regulations help guard against activities that may cause groundwater pollution. 
Groundwater pollution must be avoided not only because it degrades water quality, but it's also very expensive to clean. And I think everybody has probably seen a gas station on a corner in their neighborhood where the underground storage tanks have been dug up because they were leaking petroleum products into the groundwater. People are also learning that they shouldn't dump their used motor oil in their backyard. It's a lot cheaper and more effective to keep contaminants out of groundwater than it is to get them out once they're in. Once they're in, it can take thousands or millions of dollars and many years, and there's always some left behind. Actively managing groundwater in order to protect and maintain it is becoming more common. A growing number of water managers throughout California are applying a strategy called conjunctive use to manage their water supply. In conjunctive use, surface water and groundwater are managed together to conserve and make the best use of all available water. During wet times, available surface water is used instead of groundwater. This allows groundwater levels to rise. And during dry times, when surface availability declines, groundwater will be available to help meet critical water needs. Water practices vary throughout the state because each area has different water needs and resources. Most cities in the Sacramento Valley rely heavily on groundwater for their municipal supply. An exception is the city of Sacramento, which relies heavily on surface water. Although Sacramento Valley agriculture also uses groundwater, it relies heavily on the normally abundant surface water supply, which comes from rainfall and melting snow. This abundance has delayed the need to consider formal groundwater management. In the San Joaquin Valley, agriculture relies heavily on groundwater, and so does its growing cities, such as Bakersfield. To help reduce overdraft, several groundwater recharge programs are in operation. Recharge is the intentional replacement of groundwater. It is done by ponding surface water so it will seep into the ground. The San Joaquin Valley also has several informal conjunctive use programs that use surface water from the Central Valley Project and the State Water Project, as well as groundwater. Here in the southern San Joaquin Valley, we're water deficient. Uh, we cannot support our local economy off of uh, all of the water that we receive in dry years. As a result, we store water in wet years and rely on groundwater storage in dry years. Uh, the reliability of water is a key issue here. If you don't have a reliable supply, we can't maintain our existing economy. We use the groundwater basin to provide that reliability to meet the water supply needs of not only agriculture here, but also the uh, urban Bakersfield area, which has a population of about 350,000 people. In Southern California, there has been serious overdraft of groundwater in several areas. This has resulted in many of its basins being adjudicated. The legal right to pump water is controlled by the courts. This helps prevent pumping that could deplete groundwater reserves. The threat of severe overdraft has prompted both conjunctive use and groundwater recharge programs. Well, during the last drought, we took a lot of water out of this groundwater basin, so at the present time, there is surplus water available, and we're trying to acquire as much of that as possible to rebuild our reserves again, because we believe that there will be future shortages. We also believe that there are great uncertainties about the availability of water from the State Water Project, environmental issues in the Delta, and we think that water is going to be available to us on a sporadic basis, and we need to build a system here that allows us to take advantage, maximum advantage, of those water supplies when they're available. Programs to manage groundwater will become more common as California's population grows. Fortunately, Californians are willing to work together to conserve water. The drought of the late 80s and early 90s has shown us that water agencies are willing to cooperate in stretching and maximizing our available water supplies. Yeah, I think that once the department notified the districts of the need for the drought water bank, they were able to go to their farmers and work with them to get conjunctive use programs, conservation and land following uh, put into programs where that the growers could still make a living as well as be able to supply the needs for the, for the state. Cooperation in normal years is also important if we are going to maximize our water supplies. When surface water is plentiful, we need to replace or store as much groundwater as we can. 
That will make more groundwater available to help Californians meet their water needs during dry spells. Conjunctive use programs, water banks, and other water conservation practices will all contribute to our future water supply. But as population and water demands grow, California will continue to be susceptible to water shortages, especially during times of drought. But as forecasts for California's population growth become a reality, all Californians will benefit from a cooperative effort that efficiently uses all our available water supplies in the most economical and environmentally affordable way.